Let me say it again. Good evening to each and every one of you. So good to see you. Can you come up a little closer, those of you that are coming in, please? And um, we don't want Sister um, Marv and Sister um, Winsome picking up the habit of sitting at the back. All right, so God bless you and good to see you. Let me welcome you and trust the Lord that you had a great day. Also, let me welcome those of you that are watching on Facebook. Trust the Lord that you, you also have had a great day. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, we want to praise the Lord. And trust the Lord that you're going to be blessed by what is being said tonight. Praise the Lord. Um, this evening, we're continuing on the, on the topic of diagnosing the different people the four different group of people that come to the altar for salvation. I think as I started this session by saying some weeks ago that most of what we do, the failure comes, the, su the success comes from what's happening at the altar of a, after a sermon is preached. The failure also comes. The success and the failure depends on how we work at the altar. I want to stress again the, on the, the importance of understanding the dynamics of what happens at the altar when someone comes, even when the sermon is being preached. Most of you would remember before you became a Christian how you wanted to become a Christian all along, many, many months, years before, but you were held aback. You wanted to go, as the psalmist said, but you, he wouldn't let you go. Mm -hmm. What happened to you the day when you became a Christian? It's not that you heard a, a more powerful sermon, but it's the wrestling of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. against the forces of darkness. The saints praying and pulling you out of darkness. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? In Jude, mm -hmm. the last four verses, somewhere there, this is what it says. He said, having compassion on some, making a, make a difference. Mm -hmm. Pulling them out of the fire. Pulling them out of the fire. And on, the, to get someone to come to the Lord, it takes a, a wrestling, a pulling. Those who work at the altar, those who pray for souls must know that it's a wrestling match. Yeah. It takes yeah. the power of God to break mm -hmm. The power of Satan over a life. Amen. It takes Amen. the power of God to drive out disease mm. in the body when you're sick. Yes. Prayer, just an ordinary prayer, can't do it. Mm. Jesus was asked, why couldn't we cast them out? Mm. He said, these kind come in not but, but by prayer and, and fasting. fasting. Mm. Praise God. In fasting, you lose, you, you lose your physical appetite. You give way, it gives way to spiritual appetite. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Jesus said from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Mm -hmm. And we must know when a sermon is being preached, you can't afford to not to recognize the forces that are operating right mm -hmm. around this congregation. Yes. There are people that the devil also use, even Christians. Mm -hmm. At the time, and you could you'll be surprised the impact it has on the preacher who's preaching. But on the altar call, when the altar people are at the altar, you're talking about souls, destiny. Yes. The destiny, somebody not hear me. Yes, mm -hmm. The destiny of the person at the altar mm -hmm. depends on the prayer of the saints yes. all around. Amen. And the believing that one shall chase a thousand. We are not dealing with just one demon. No. One man had one demon. One man had one demon, mm -hmm. and he was cast out. But he went. He didn't come back on his own. No. He got no. seven of the demons to come back yes. to lodge in the home. And the yes. the last state of the man was worse. Yes. Jesus cast out mm -hmm. legions out of one man. Amen. Can you imagine? Amen. Every person you see out there that is unsaved. Mm -hmm. Every person. I want to say it again. Because some of us are missing it. Every person that you see out there is unsaved. Yeah. Is held back by a devil. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. Every individual that you see, and although some of us are trying with them and telling them, why don't you give your heart to the Lord? Why don't you give you, why don't you come and get saved? Why don't you come to church? Just like the man at the tomb of Gadara, mm. they bound him with whips, mm. they bound him with chains, yes. they bound him with ropes. They bound Samson who was anointed with the same thing. Yes, Samson amen. broke it. Yes. This man couldn't break his. No. He broke his, but he could not break the spiritual chain. Mm. But Jesus broke it. Amen. So that's the reason why when an altar call is being made, you can't be afford. The devil is so glad to see some of you on your phone. Mm. My God. The devil is so glad. He's so delighted. Mm. He has gone. He's run a dividing line right through you. He's run a line because if he can, def if he can defeat you, one chase a thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. Can you imagine when that one, two, three, four is on the phone? This one is on Google. This one is on WhatsApp. This one is on on Facebook. This one is on YouTube. He already got it. He must be so glad for some people. Mm. I know some people don't like what I'm saying. Sorry. Mm. Paul said, whatsoever things are good, yeah, whatsoever yeah, things are honest, honest. whatsoever, whatsoever things, things are true, are true. think on these things. Yeah. Trust me, believers, I've said something tonight that if somebody has come here and said, some people will be saying, Lord, revelation. Now, this is a problem with us. <laughs> Listen to me. What I've just said is deep. It's not even something that I've prepared. Yeah. Okay? Second thing we need to... Huh? Say it again that somebody hear you. Put you to sleep. Because it's why the enemy... Why it's a slip, the enemy sow a seed. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think we need to recognize training. Some people <coughs> do complain in every church I go to. I went to a church last week out of town and um, I, on my way back I was talking to somebody because someone said something to me and uh, we, we concluded that most churches, 90% of them, when a pastor goes into the church, the people work four months or so with them, six weeks or so, and all of a sudden everybody go back into the rut. If we work together with the leaders of our churches, mm -hmm. with the vision, you'd be surprised to know how damage we can, the damage yeah. we can do yeah. to together. the community, mm -hmm. to the Deborah community of demons. Yes. One chase a thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. Amen. Thirdly, I want to say training, how important is training? It's not the lack of training that we churches have, especially our church has. It's the willingness to take on board what we say. Mm -hmm. So tonight as we come, we want to look at the di diagnosing the four different group of people that come to the altar when a sermon is preached or the Holy Spirit is moving. Wrong diagnosis, I said, will lead to phony prescription. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as I said last week, is discerning. First John 4, verse 1. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. To another, he said, working of, of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits is one of the most important mm. because if you don't diagnose what's wrong with the person, if a doctor ever give you a, um, a, a, a tablet that is for your kidney, he give it to you for a headache, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the gifts is discerning of spirits, mm -hmm. not spirit, but spirits. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was somewhere recently, and uh, during the altar call, I asked the worship leaders to use their mic. And I thought the microphone was off. 
one of the microphones off and I realized this attitude I was dealing with. Mm -mm. And that's a spirit. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. The attitude. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we need to discern the spirits that are operating, even rebellious spirits. Even sometimes the simple, the simple things that you're asked to come forward. I'm not talking about you tonight. I'm talking about the other people. <laughs> Just to ask you to come forward, and you sit. That's a re, that's a that's a rebellious spirit. You'd be surprised to know how it works. Obedience is better than sacrifice, than heart, than the fat of rams. And when you're looking at it, you say it's nothing. It's a person standing on their own two feet. Check what the Bible said. What do you think the Bible called it? Religion. You just said it, rebellion. Hmm? As you said, it's rebellion. And what does the Bible say about rebellion? Uh, the, <laughs> disobedience. disobedience. Uh, and what does it say? It's like what yeah, like got the word compared to what? It's like witchcraft. Like witchcraft. It's what witchcraft. compared to witchcraft. witchcraft. What did it say? Worst. It's worst. I was in the church it was a weekend I was in London and I got home and said Bishop did you see the older woman oh I was in the church <laughs> he said where I, I said she passed by at a certain time mm -hmm. <laughs> she was in the church and then uh, you could tell by the fandangles. Mm -hmm. But God uh, condemned that. But he condemned rebellion, disobedience, just mm -hmm. as much. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? So just think about it. Mm -hmm. This is the importance of diagnosis. It's wrong diagnosis lead to phony and their um, pres um, prescription. And one of the gifts, the first one that we looked at, the other day is the unsaved. The second one we want to look at is a backslider. And the third is the uncertain ones. The fourth is the defeated ones. Okay, so we looked at the unsaved already. Okay? Praise God. The second one is the backslider. We didn't talk about that one, did we? No. Now, they are in every meeting. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest person to win is a person who would know the way. Mm -hmm. They can quote scriptures. The backslider will tell you how many hypocrites in the church. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Most of us did it. No? Mm -hmm. No? How many of you have a backslide, backslidden before? I backslided a few times, so I know what yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. How many of you did use the argument about hypocrites in the church? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Never did. I did. I did. You did. Okay. I did. I use all sorts of excuses. How they dress and I'm not. And all sorts. Looking down on your clothes. Any other excuse? Yeah. Backsliders Judge use? Huh? <laughs> you have to speak up a little because they are yeah, sister daughters. Need to hear you. What did you say again? Judgmental. Judgmental. Um, okay. Judgmental. Thank you. That's a big one. Any other? The backslider is used. Nobody can nobody can tell the argument that backslider is used. They think they know it all. They think they know it all. Been it, done it. Wear the t-shirt. Any, anything else? Never huh? seen Never done nothing wrong. Uh huh. And another one that they used, they've started already and stopped. And they don't want to start again and stop. So they are waiting That's right. till the time comes. Yeah. Yeah. And another one they use is that if, what if, what if you miss the, the rapture? Then it's God will. It's God will for me to be saved. And they even go and put the blame on God. God, yeah. yeah. It's surprised to see that the you know the things that we have said. Mm -hmm. So they are in every meeting. 
They're the ones who have wandered from the fold. Those who have lost their love and has grown cold mm -hmm. in, the serve, in their service. They have neglected prayer, mm -hmm. the word, and their testimony. Mm -hmm. They've neglected all of those. Backsliders have not necessarily gone back into the world, but they have lost their fellowship yeah. with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have you, re re do you remember what Jesus said to John in John in Revelation 2 and 3. There are some words that he, mentioned, he repeated over and over to every church. He said, you have lost your first love. You have lost your first love. Probably some of you might remember um, in your life, some part of your life, when somebody was crazy about you. Crazy about you. And then all of a sudden, the person, love turns sour. They, they may do their chores, but it's not the same. You can tell. Jesus said, I know your works. Mm -hmm. I know your work. So you find we think it's just a person who's gone back and mm -hmm. gone into revolt against God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are. Yeah, we come cold and look cold. One of the hardest things to do is to get Christians to come to the altar. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when was the last time you that are listening out there, you that are here, went to the altar to cry? Any of you remember the song? I'm, I'm probably the only one who remembered it. I thirst, I long to know your love. Your full salvation I would prove. Selena, stop laughing. Don't be jealous because you don't remember the song. But since to thee I cannot move. Lord, take me as I am. Lord, take me as I am. Those were the songs. I know you would have remembered. Yes. You don't know the chorus, but you, the verse, but you know the chorus. Those were the songs we used to sing at prayer meeting. Straight to the altar. Yeah, it's medicine. We used to do, we used to sing. Because... That's why in this convention that is coming up, the plan is to, after the worship, in fact, there's one hour worship and we don't want one hour singing. There's a difference between singing and good song. But worshiping is a different thing. Many worship leaders can lead songs but not bring people into worship. When you look in the Psalms, and I am not criticizing anybody, but it would be good if everybody who's listening take heed to what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Hear what the psalmist said in Psalms 47, I believe. It said, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yeah. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God. Yeah. Yeah. Believers, when you come to church, and you're down, you're, dis, you're in despair, you need somebody mm -hmm. to say, come on now, clap your hands, all you people. Yes, amen. Shout amen. unto God. Yes. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, that's his testimony. That's a worship leader's testimony. Yes. Shall continually be not my mouth. Yes. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What's the next line? Oh, magnify. This is where you bring the congregation. You are there, but you've got to bring the congregation here. There, you are here, but you've got to bring them here. Yes. Oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, Amen. come on, come on. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Oh, praise be to Amen. God. I sought the Lord and he heard me. 
So you amen. got to understand what worship is yes. about. Yes, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise God. Thank so you. there is a power in worship. There is yes. a power in praise. Amen. 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 Those who have wandered from the fold, when they, they, they must remember what it's like when they once saved. Jesus said, remember your first love. Mm -hmm. So the backslider is a person who will forget their first love. You, they're in church. Sit on the church roll. Nobody not hearing me. Everybody going quiet. To yeah. Yeah. Even pastors. We as pastors, we can be so cold. Mm -hmm. We're doing the work because we know how to do it. Yes, amen. But you cannot do God's work unless effectively until you're consecrated. Yes, and amen. Jesus said, I wish if you were either cold <coughs> or hot. Yes, Come on, believers. Yes. Incipient worship is what God dislikes. Mm -hmm. So the person who is discerning, you can look over at Janet and see if Janet is the same person she was four weeks ago. Mm, that's right. You'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. okay. You stand up here and you can tell you are a mother and you have six children mm -hmm. and all they're all upstairs. Mm -hmm. And you can hear a sound and you can tell if there's trouble up there. Yes, amen. You know when to run up. Yes. And you see them come from school and you know when something is wrong. Yeah, that's In right. the church, amen. you must also discern. Yes, amen. Come on, church. Amen. Wake up. Yes. Wake up. Wake up. The believers who have lost their first love mm. and have grown cold in their service. Oh, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you... Can you imagine if you had gone to school and the teacher is teaching and you have your mobile phone on and looking at it. Some school don't allow mobile phone. Can you imagine? Can, and I'm not knocking mobile phone because mobile phone is good in it. It's good in it. It's good in it. Huh? Anything you want to know. <laughs> I have a friend, I have a, if you call, you hear her say now, Siri, number one. <laughs> In other words, I said, well, who's Siri? <laughs> who you have there? That's a friend. Siri. Siri. Mm -hmm. Siri, number one. Siri must turn down the volume mm -hmm. to number one. Mm -hmm. And you think, you think, you think it's somebody in the house. <laughs> Siri number three. Yeah, yeah. And that little machine. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I bought one about three years ago, you know, and I one little one you can just put on, you can but I don't really use it. But mm, when I heard my friend the chubber sometimes, Siri, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. Siri. And you think it's a real dog. You have in the house. <laughs> yes. Amen. Now come back to what I was saying. Um, when we lose our love, I want to give you an example. You remember Solomon, when Solomon reigned, Brother Jim, mm -hmm. he, he made everything, all the instruments of what? Gold. Gold. Mm -hmm. Every one of those instruments were of gold. Yeah. Can you, you're following me? Yeah. yeah. Janet, every one of them were of gold. Mm -hmm. The first invasion of Judah, of Israel, when they took away all the utensils, you know what they did? They replaced them with things of brass mm. yeah. and silver. What do we have? What do we offer? So that's why you can't afford to lose the mothers of Zion and the fathers of Zion. Mm -hmm. When somebody comes to the altar, when someone comes to the altar, and you sitting down there. Don't tell me you're not out of train. Out of workers train. Mm -hmm. You sit down. Unconcerned. You're not discerning what is happening. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody breaking into your house. And uh, your, 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 your dad gone downstairs. 
and everybody else watching TV. Demons interfere, demons come come in. And you're not care, you don't, you don't, you're not in the fight. I there was this, there was a saying back home in the Caribbean, I'm the only person who remember it. If it's head, mean the red. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any, any of you ever heard that one before? Yeah. Sister Winston, oh, you nodded in your head like you, and you I've know, heard of it. Where, where did you hear of it? Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of it. You remember because you were born here, Sister Dan? You were what? No, but you've been here, you're almost born here. <laughs> you've never heard it, Sister. If, if, it, if I head mean the red. Who used to say? A stepmother. You have a stepmother. Step yeah. Okay, Sister Barbara, you heard it? Oh, yeah, I just heard it. Okay. Elaine? I didn't start to end the fight. Okay, I've never heard that one. That's That must be a new one. <laughs> okay, I must remember that one. So, let's come back to it here. It's an altar call. Four people turn up at the altar. Are you following me? Yeah. Because if you if if you're hearing this and it's going through your ears, you have not learned anything. If if it's salt, you're in the pot. Yeah. If it's egg, you're in the red. Yeah. You cannot afford when somebody's at the altar. Because the person who is preaching, whether no matter who it is, when you have they're dealing with scattering thoughts and brains before them. Yeah. Their old joints mindset become disjointed. Because they're wrestling, they recognize what they're wrestling in. It's not just here, it's there, it's there. Yes, the battle okay. is lost. Mm. Might as well you've given up. Mm -hmm. What God wants from you that are here tonight is that you yourself will become aware. This is awareness. Mm. I was driving down Hempstead Road one day, minding my own business. And as a policeman stepped out with a thing, point, a man stepped out with a thing, point. No, it could have been a gun. <laughs> it could have been a gun. So anyway, I nearly put my foot down and said, well, if they're going to shoot me, so I'm going to speed up a little more. But anyway, I decided to slow down. But they still said I was going a few minutes, miles faster than I should. And I had to go and sit down six hours in this place, just to say my points, <laughs> listening to one man, six hours, my God. six hours, and he had his voice on the same level. Yes. I, sl I slept, I buck, <laughs> and, uh, oh God, yes. but the, some of the things that that man showed us in the six hours, it took me weeks and weeks and weeks to be able to drive the way I used to drive again. It's awareness. Yes. Is that what it, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. Awareness. Yeah. The man told us, I don't know if it's true, mm. that if you hit somebody at 50 miles per hour, a person walking across the road, it's like a jumbo jet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I spent the rest of the day trying to work it all the day. You know? mm. It's a awareness course. Yes. This is an awareness course. Mm. Because if every person in, in this congregation recognized what happened, then what it take it took for that individual to leave and go to the, the front. Yes. That's one battle they fought. Mm -hmm. And if everybody has recognized what is happening, amen. And start because the demons love had to lose that person for that person to come there. Yes, amen. We need a spiritual awareness. Those of you that are listening from outside, I trust to the Lord that you'd have, I just think about it. Because there are demons operating in our church. Mm, all the time. And you know, the problem is they're getting away with it. Mm -hmm. And one of the worst things, when you allow a demon, a bully, to get away. So, Job just says in it, Mr. Go ahead, man. I said, Job, what did he say? He said, um, 
when we present ourselves, mm -hmm. we never have self present. Each time we come into church and present ourselves before God, we come also present himself. Yes. He's, he's here before we got here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's never late. No, exactly. Huh? He's never late. Mind, mind check on everything. He never late. Thank yeah. you. Mind check on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if every Christian recognized that before you come here, mm. as a pastor, I know this for sure, you can pray yourself up hot. Mm. And you turn up at church. No matter how you pray yourself, you gotta watch it. Yes. What's the first person, the second person, the third person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so at the altar is backslider. But don't think of backslider as a person who have turned from God. There are those who have lost their first love. Mm -hmm. There are those who have grown grown cold in their service. Years ago, when I first became a Christian, I didn't understand it then, but I remember that, that incident, even although it happened 72, 73, in the Montfort Hall. Mm -hmm. The altar call, and I started talking about the prayer service we were going to have at the convention. The altar call, for all sermons, we're given, people are given chance to respond to it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the Montford Hall, you have no less than 500 people at the front, cram at the front. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember? Yes. Marvel, you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're talking, you're not talking about the high, I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I never forget one night as I left, came out the front, and you remember where the high screen used to be at the front? The, and the going over, I saw it was about three, four people carrying this young lady, mm. and she was almost off her feet. They were carrying her, and uh, she stopped and she bawled. She said, "I didn't know that I had gone so far. Mm. I didn't know that I had gone so far. Mm -mm. I never forget mm -hmm. the face of that young lady. Mm -hmm. She didn't know." One of the problems the devil, tactics the devil use on us mm -hmm. is when we have lost our way, mm -hmm. he was walking in confusion instead of going back. Mm -hmm. In the book Pilgrim's Progress, when John Bunyan saw in his dream Christian going up the hill, remember he dropped his scroll, it's his Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not his Bible in real sense, but he, he fell asleep. That was his problem. He fell yeah, asleep. Yeah. Whilst he was sleeping, his scroll fell out. It's an allegory. Mm -hmm. What it meant that whilst he was going up the hill, difficulty. Any of you go up the hill, difficulty in your yeah, Christian walk? Yeah. Yes. Anybody? Yes. 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 Anybody walk up the hill, difficulty? Yes. yes. That's yes. when you're really tired and you feel yes. like not going up. Oh, oh, you, you, oh when you crawl, oh, Selena, yeah. you feel that you can't crawl anymore. You stop. Yeah. You, you, fell, you fell asleep yeah. and yeah. his scroll fell out and he did not even know it. Yeah. It wasn't until he went up yeah. and he decided to take out his scroll and read. Mm -hmm. He realized yeah. he left the scroll yeah. and the voice told him, go back. And he went back down where he slept yeah. and he found it. Amen. We got to go back where we're coming from. Yes. Amen. We got to go back. That's there was a right. song I heard. I've heard it once. Um, it was, I think, Sister Dixon, Sister Leslie, um, Pastor, uh, Brother, um, um, uh, Fisher, Brother Fisher at the time. He became pastor and senior pastor of Leicester and Brixton at the end. But Pastor Fisher, and there was somebody else with them. Mm -hmm. And they sung the song, Let Us Go Back. Mm -hmm. Let Us Go Back. So, here we are, we need to discern the spirits that are operating. They have neglected prayer, the word, and their testimony. People used to testify, and now they don't testify. They are backsliders too. They don't hear the word anymore. You know how many Christians I see come here to church, and 
every minute they go out, they answer Boise call, Je Jenny call, mm -hmm. Susie call, mm -hmm. Dylan call, Mark call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're going out to answer. Mm -hmm. I know what's wrong. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Listen, I know what's wrong. Yeah. I can see it. I yeah. spot it. Yeah, that's right. I discern it. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not calling me brother Jim and I'm answering you when I'm praying. Mm -hmm. No, sir, not me. No, you're not. <laughs> when when all the years, especially in my latter years of life, I learned something. Mm -hmm. If I'm having dinner with my family, even if my phone is on the table, is nearby. Mm. I'm not answering it. I'm having dinner. dinner Same thing. Yeah. I'm having dinner. Mm. My children will be calling. I see that they're calling. Mm -hmm. I'm not answering. If I see them call three times behind me, boom, 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 boom. I think something is wrong. Mm. Yeah. And I'll yeah. say, excuse me, from the table. Mm. But that's that when we love somebody, mm. You know, if, I, if, I, if a young girl loves somebody and a young boy loves somebody and they're out and you can't, you're calling them as a parent, you just got beep every time the phone rings, you just Decline. get beep. <laughs> beep. Amen. Beep. 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 <laughs> you have um, a brother, Evangelist Harvey has a teenage daughter. Is all you, are we sure you're talking about, Brother Harvey? No, no, no. Oh, sure. <laughs> That you to want to just burst no, I agree with what you say. If you're in love with somebody, you're not gonna answer. Basically, if you're in love with God and people calling, you're not gonna answer them. Thank you. Uh, so I, I, that's the bit I say amen. Not amen. Amen. That bit, but say amen. You weren't what talking you about Aisha. No. <laughs> no. Not yet. No. Aisha, Aisha is not talking about you. Prioritizing. Um when we first became a Christian, we were taught the importance of prayer. I recall going to church about a year after I became a Christian. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I see people rejoicing at the altar and I couldn't rejoice, I wasn't sinning. I had a misconception, mis bad notion of what Christianity really was. Mm -hmm. But I was concerned to the point where I go in the bush at night to pray, mm -hmm. to ask God what was wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Believers, we got to take our spiritual lives serious. Yeah. Amen. Anyone have any comments you'd like to make? Well, I hear some people say they don't get the chance to ask questions or talk. In the Bible study, which is a lie from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody want to say something? It's been October 2018. The convention. We'll come back to it. The convention this year, next next week. It starts 12:30 on Saturday. It's it's followed. The, the, we have worship. And then there are three lectures. We break for dinner and at four o'clock we start. We have the um, preliminaries and there's an hour of praise. Mm -hmm. Those of you who were at the Burns evening, the group is coming to participate. Mm -hmm. We'll be sectioning it from the norm where we just we they will probably mix with our group but we want also the distinction mm -hmm. we are we have invited um, the prophecy church from Bristol from Gloucester we have been we invited the Bristol district to come along mm -hmm. we have invited um, the pastor from Helium and their church, we've invited that. And we've also made it clear, I spoke to the Kingfisher pastor, you'll be coming. We made it clear to them, we want an hour of power and praise. Mm -hmm. But we also want, during that time, 
the pastors and the leaders, responsible members of the church, to be walking around and praying for people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. After the sermon, there's another hour where we're just going to be praying for people. Amen. And trust me, if people are going to be on their scatterbrain, distracted, it's best if they go out in the hall. Mm -hmm. Because we, we're going to mean business. Amen. We want to take time. Our convention in the past was successful because we were given the chance to respond to the word of God. Amen. If God speaks to you, you should respond. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that's what we are talking about for Saturday and Sunday. Both late sessions start four and apart from the prayer and the, which will be not the prayer and the um, word it will be the rest will be just seeking the Lord mm -hmm. we want the Holy Spirit to fill us again Amen. Amen. we want to be re refilled mm -hmm. we want you can't drink glass of water today and and don't drink anymore mm -hmm. you become dehydrated mm -hmm. You have to drink water. Yes, amen. You have to drink water. God always liked in his Holy Spirit to water. Mm -hmm. Come. You've gone to broken cistern. Come. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's about the convention. Come back to anyone else who just want to pick up on, um, reflect on what it is when you've lost, when you've missing out you're leaking what's the result of that when you're leaking spiritually leaking, you're empty you become empty weak weak and you got to speak up please because we're in a bible study but other yes. people are joining us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sister olga what uh what is the result of Spiritual malnourishment. That word sounds like a good word. Mm -hmm. Whatever it means, it sounds like a very good word. Mm -hmm. Spiritual malnourishment. <laughs> Malnutrition. Mm -hmm. You're suffering from something like that, right? Anyone else? Spiritual fatigue. How do you describe that, Celine? Tired. Tired? Like we need the mic. Go on again, please. You're not talking to Dwayne, no, you're talking to, to um, the congregation and the people outside. So talk again, please. Spiritual fatigue. Spiritual fatigue. So even though you know that in past experiences that God can help you, mm -hmm. your your motivation isn't there, you're you're tired. No, as soon as you do say, right, okay, I'm gonna pray about this, it's just as you said, the tiredness can be with you and there's different things that just drain that little bit of motivation that you may have had mm -hmm. out of you. So you just it's not there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Anyone else? The, the question I want to ask, Bishop, and I mean, I'm in the mic, so my Lord, I was in the screen of the mic. No, but you see, it's recorded. Okay, give me my, give me my screen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question I want to ask, Bishop, is that how do we recognize, as you would say, you come spiritually leaked? Then how do you recognize? How do you know that you're spiritually leaking out? That's the result of when you're spiritually leak. But how do you, what are some of the traits that you identify? Symptoms. That these, yeah, how you say symptoms are, what they call it. Okay. Anyone want to answer? Thank you. Um, anyone want to respond to that? Uh, most uh, time people um, become Sister, um, sister um, Alder, then Sister Darker. Um, sister Alder, Sister Darker. Um, 
Um, you, um, so, um, if you're spiritually drained, you don't want to mix at all with any of the brethren, you don't want to come to church, there's nothing at all that can actually get you out of the house to come, no matter what revival break out, to just, that's not me, I can't do it, I can't, but you know, you realize that something is definitely wrong. You hear somebody maybe singing a song, you're thinking, what they're singing, you know, and all that. Even though you were up on top one of the time, you become really weak and you just don't want to hear anything. And it's like giving a plant water, the water actually leak out from the plant. And if you don't keep water in the plant and it just drain and drain, you don't have like a source of here to catch the water, the plant become actually dry and start limping. And that's what happened with the spiritual growth of this not there. You're limp. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're limp. You okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'm not too far. I'm not too far. I'm just a doctor. I want to say. Um, people who become weak, you can tell that they, they complain. Nothing ever right for them in church. If they Amen. do come, they complain, they grumble about the message, they grumble about the singing, they grumble about everything. So you can recognize that that person, something not right. They become cold and just complain. You got, I, I, over my years of um, Christianity, of coming into church, I've seen that. And you can hear people just complain and mourn and grumble and about things, nothing never seems to be right for them. So you can tell that something, spiritually, something. they become getting weak or something not right, because they're never happy. Okay, all right, thank you. Anyone else want to say something? Thank you, sister. Oh, thank you. Well, I think it's I would like to say something. Okay, Bishop, my next question is, um, as we identify them, persons who, who, who are at that stage, how do we approach them and how do we encourage them? That's my next question, please. Okay. Um, Anyone want to respond to that? Yeah. Sister Anna. Got to show them love. Janet, would you like to take the microphone, please? Say something, please. Say something before something is said. Or do you encourage them? Maybe you need to spend some time with the person. Find out what's happening with them. Speak up a little louder for me, please. Maybe you find some time to spend with that person and find out how they're getting on. Jenny, yes, I think so. Find out how they're getting on. Um, sometimes you don't know what they're going through mm. outside of church. Mm. Um, it, it, it's easy to say, point the finger, but then sometimes you can understand where they're coming from. There could be a lot of things that have affected their life that maybe they need someone to spend some time with them. You can take them out for coffee, Talk with them, pray with them, mm -hmm. and just um, kind of say, I'm there for you. Mm. You know, I'm there for you. And it says, I think it's, I can't remember the scripture, but it says, if um, you see your brother taking in a fault, or not, not so much fault, but falling, then you help them up. Yeah. Help them up. If you feel strong spiritually, then you can help somebody else, can't mm. you? Rather than, from the finger. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else would like to? Um, it could be also um, something that actually is said um, within the church, within the congregation. So it's best really to actually um, speak to the person, as Sister um, Janet said. Hold the person, find out what is wrong, and then you know try and get to the bottom of it, or 
uh, um, create the person. Mm. Okay. If, okay, any of you listening from outside and you want to uh, put a point, if you're from this congregation, there's a church group. You can also, I uh, think there may be one or two people who will just um, transfer your um, question to us that are here. If you're looking from outside and you have a question, you can probably put it on the Facebook page that you're listening on and hopefully someone will see it and relate to us. Um, Brother Evangelist R, the question is, both questions are pertinent. Now let's take the last one. Repeat it again, please. Yeah. Right. How do we approach those persons who spiritually drain, they can tell that they are disconnected. They are not interested in what's happening. They are, they are, their mind is elsewhere. How do we approach them? How do we encourage them to get back to that place where they are in love with the Lord again? Okay. I think there's, with all the questions, the answers that you have provided, they are good answers, great answers. But I would like to remind each and every one that the Word of God, the Word of God, is what God sent, the preach Word. Yeah? There is a fivefold ministry that God has built His church on. The pastor, the evangelist, bring the mic up here for me, please. The pastor, the evangelist, let me just put it right here, thanks. The pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, the apostle, and the teacher. A pastor does not necessarily have all those ministries, those ministries. He's not bestowed with all of them. And sometimes people do believe that in the church, yes, our church is built on a wrong um, notion. The, the job of the pastor is to feed the congregation. And he or she must take heed to feed the flock. The congregation is, the, sh the shepherd does not bear sheep or lambs. But the sheep does. Amen? Amen. The, the believers are soul winners. It's not the pastor who's a soul winner. It's the believers. Amen. Everybody, including the pastor. Amen. The pastor's job is to teach those and disciple them mm. to make them become so that out of that group will come pastors. Out of that group will come more teachers. And uh, you will recognize the gift as they are coming through. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So the word preached. The pastor's job is to bring in the evangelist, even as we have here on Sunday. We have pastors exchange. We have preachers coming. Um, Apostle Haynes should be coming here on uh, just after um, the convention. Yeah, it was announced. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's coming here just after our district after our district convention. For three or four days. We're bringing in people like that. Mm. and uh, But it's a word that God uses. And if an individual refuses the word. There is nothing you can do to help yeah. that person. Yeah. If you refuse the word. Sometimes we, re we refuse the word. Because we don't, we don't necessarily like the person. You don't have to like the person to receive the word. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amos, if you read in the book of Amos, Amos, Amos was told to get up and go. We don't want you here. Mm. And he said, I was not a preacher. I was the son of a preacher. I was not a prophet. I was the son of a prophet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was a gatherer of sycamore, mm. urge man. Mm -hmm. And God called me to preach. Paul warned the church about believers having hitching ears. Mm -hmm. And in this day, there's a plot or an abundance yes. of um, Facebook pages, um, YouTube sermons. You can... People don't even necessarily go to church now because they have so much sermon. They are mm -hmm. saturated. Mm -hmm. You cannot have fellowship on phone anyway or yeah. YouTube. You have fellowship with people. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. YouTube was something on Facebook was something on Zoom was something that God used powerfully during the time of the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. There is a danger sometimes when you 
Listen up carefully. Listen up. There's a danger when God used something at a given time, at a season, and afterward you're still using it and worship. You become an it become an idol to you. Mm -hmm. It become an idol. Mm -hmm. And you look on some of our prayer groups or whatever groups that we have on Facebook conference call. You watch and see how many people are silent throughout this duration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're yeah. there, appearing as they are there, but they are not there. Mm -hmm. But they linked, they light up. Mm -hmm. like we got to be careful. Um, what can be good for us become an idol? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of something happened when to Israel when they were coming out and God told them to make a, an image of it and at the end they turned it into idol. The same thing happened to um, Gideon. Gideon did something and I'm trying to think what it is and uh, at the end people make it more important than God's word. Mm -hmm. We've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. You get um, Zoom. Zoom was brilliant at the time. The amount of Christians come to, came to the Lord in Zoom. But today, lots of people, even believers now, it become an idol. Mm. God said, I was, the scripture said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And Amen. I'm not arguing Amen. against Amen. these platforms. But there's nothing that can beat fellowship. Fellowship. Amen. 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 Get them together. Fellowship. Mm -hmm. fellowship, touching the flesh mm -hmm. amen so we come back to the backslider uh, closing down or preparing to close um, we have neglected prayer, how can we help let me go back to the question how can we help those people when someone rebel against the word that is being preached, it's very hard for you to help them mm -hmm. but there are times some of us can get to somebody individual and help them because they would yeah. you can talk to them yeah and you must be spotters it doesn't matter you just got become a christian when i first became a christian there were people even in our church deacons i'd go to their house and say yo what you did there was wrong mm -hmm. it may not be a long time don't tell me that i'm i'm young green boy and all that what you did was wrong mm -hmm. And if you're a praying person, you should know whether, whether or not what I'm saying to you is true. And I wasn't long in the faith before I recognized one. But the beauty of it, I, was, I, could, I had a car. I could get around to people's homes. And I don't get around to people's homes to chat, chat foolishness and talk church and business, church business. No, you would never get that business. I go around there and I say, come for prayer. Come to pray with you and I'm gone. Amen. If I see something that you've done in church, I see you misbehave and people are applauding you. I said, okay, people may have applauded you, but God didn't. Yeah. People may applaud you, but God didn't. Amen. So they have neglected prayer. Neglected the word and their testimony, you're no longer hearing them. So people are not necessarily gone back into the world. But fellowship needs to be restored. Amen. Amen. And I say this that sometimes um, you have a lot of churches where people are members, they're not talking to old friends. Mothers not talking to sisters, sisters not talking to this and that. Mm -hmm. You cannot have fellowship with God and you break fellowship with man. Amen. Amen. You cannot have fellowship with God. You can't be super close to God no. and super f far from your, your brother and your sister. No. It doesn't work. No. Amen. I love the bicycle. Um, no um, explanation. You know the bicycle ring, rim. Mm -hmm. yeah. The closer the the spokes get to the hub, the closer they get to each other. Mm -hmm. They even overlap. 
And the farther they get from the hub, yeah. the farther they get from each other. Mm -hmm. You cannot be close to God mm -hmm. and your behavior is not like mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hmm? If two people are always close, watch and see how they come off on each other. If you're close to God, you will be like God. Amen. That's why we have the gifts differentiated from the fruit. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit. You may not have that gift, but the fruits of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. They must be in you. So, the, we need that fellowship. Yeah. And if the fellowship, you cannot um, be praying and um, asking God to be close. You remember that song? The closer I get to you. So is it... Um, The closer I get to you. Who was that again? Um, God, whining, whining. Was it? Was it whining? This is whining. Mm, that was a Christian one, really. Um, but I think we need to remember. People need to remember. You cannot be close to God and far from your brother. Amen. Yeah? Very true. I take I take the faith seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super duper whooper, but I take the faith seriously. Absolutely. Yeah? The same thing I can I don't believe you can be close to God and far from God with your money. Mm -hmm. Anybody somebody say ouch. Ouch. I remember that one dropped in for a long time, Bishop. <laughs> you cannot be right with God and wrong with your money. No, can't. No, sir. Elaine, it's not possible, is it? No, sir. No, sir. Because God called us robbers. And the Bible does tell us that we must walk with lowliness of mind. In meekness. Preferring one above the other. Amen. I shared with a friend whose mother is very um, liquid. Liquid? Yeah. Financially well off. Yeah. Yes, like this. What do you, how do you do, Brother Jim? Do, am I doing it right? No, I don't know. Uh, Fingertips. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. And um, the, the, the parent abandoned one of the child and bequeathed everything, even for those that didn't care and the one cared. You have to understand, sometimes things happen to us that we can have a child and but it wasn't a good relationship that produce a child. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be rape. And uh, it's not easy sometimes for us to carry a guilt. Mm -hmm. And I have to encourage that individual and I say, listen, um, your mom, your dad, marked you out of the thing. But can you go into scripture and look where the scripture said, my father and my mother forsake me. The Lord will take you. And God will bless you in the way. I've seen parents leave things for children and in no time they will grow. Yes, amen. The glory of God. I've seen a mother left over 120,000 pounds for that was just cash for a son in Jamaica. And within five years he was born. That mother was a Christian. She left nothing for God. And that you blow it. You sow to the wind. Hello, somebody. Yes. And you reap the whirlwind. And uh, 
I've seen that. So I have to say to the individual, remember, go into scriptures and look. Mm. And you cannot unbless a blesser, the blessed. Amen. You cannot unbless the blessed. Mm. Because when God bless you, yes. yeah, if you walk and remind and remember all the time that every single day I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Yes. Get up Amen. and I'm saying that I rise this morning, I'm blessed. Yes. I'm Amen. going out this morning, I'm, I'm blessed. blessed. In my going out, I came in and I'm blessed. Yes. And I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Yes. Those words so powerful in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It'll give you a revelation. Yes. Yes. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's great having you. Thank you for joining us this evening. On behalf of the New Testament Church of God, 89 Stroud Road, I would like to say thank you for joining. There are other platforms you could have, could have been on, but we are grateful to you. We ask if you've been blessed by this, why not share the post to somebody? Especially the early part of what we were dealing with, about the power that operates here in the outer call. So we're talking about four um, things that have different type of people that come to the altar. But we dealt also at earlier on with the power that operate during this time in the church. For the individual to come forward when the individual is there, if the devil get the chance to distract everybody and scattered every mindset, he had already won. When those individuals should be put in together to blast hell out of that individual at the mm -hmm. altar. Amen. Those of you who have been saved a long time, you should not hesitate to be at the position that you're supposed to be at. God bless you and the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. It's God spare our lives. We hope to be back next um, next um, Wednesday. Praise be to God. I wasn't supposed to be doing tonight. But I ended up doing it. Not a problem. But God bless you. Amen. Let's stand together. Amen. As you stand, I want you to pledge yourself that you're going to do better, do better when there is an altar call, Amen. when the sermon is being preached. Amen. You want to pledge yourself that you're going to, because you become aware. You become aware right now yes. what's happening to an individual when they come to church. When the word is being preached, mm -hmm. you're, you're becoming aware. So awareness is important. Awareness is supposed to change us. All right? So as we stand together. Uh, Redwell Center, Bishop. This Saturday is Redwell Center. Is this Saturday? Yes. yes. Okay. The 11th, isn't it? No, 14th. 14th, rather. Okay. Well, I know the gentleman is already informed about it. So, all right, let's present our bodies before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's present ourselves to be used of God, to sing, to speak, to pray. To be used of God, to show someone the way. I long so much to feel the touch of His consuming fire. To be used of God is my To be used to sing, to speak, to pray. Let this be your prayer. To be used of God to show someone the way. I long so much. I long so much to feel your touch.
can you just pray that prayer in the song again? To be used of God to sing, to speak, to pray. To be used of God to show someone on the way. I long so much to feel that touch of His consuming fire. To be used of God is my Pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, God, just surrender to him right now. To be you, Lord, I want to be used of you. I want to be used of you when I sing, when I speak, when I pray. Father, we come into your presence right now. We surrender our lives. We present our bodies of flesh before your throne. We recognize the forces that operate like the four winds of what they are under. God and the command that comes to them. To hurt not the, 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 the trees, nor the grass, nor the feed, the food. God so this moment you have given a command to us. We are responding to it right now. We bow before you. We recognize those forces. And we come this very moment against them. In the name of Jesus, as you have made us become aware tonight, oh God, of the powers that operate on the backslide, oh God, and those that are being backslid, those that are losing out, and we're reminded of the words that you've said, Lord, I know your works, I know your works, I know you have patience, I know you hate those who ain't the who are practice the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. But I have somewhat against you. You have left your first to love. God, here we are tonight. Every single one of us present here, oh God, are guilty of this. We have left our first to love. God, the desire we once had for you, oh God, is no longer prominent in our lives. Jehovah God, I pray tonight that you would speak to our hearts. Oh God, that we become devil chasers, devil conscious. Oh God, senators, God lovers, hallelujah, and Holy Ghost anointed people of God. We pray tonight as you challenge us to your, according to your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will touch our hearts afresh tonight. Revive us again. Revive us again, we pray. Revive us again, Lord. Revive us again, Lord. Revive your church. Speak to those who are here tonight. Speak to those online. Speak to those that will receive this word. A few weeks down the road, a few years down the road, that they will learn something tonight. As a result, oh God, in the, their congregation that they are permitted, God Almighty, someone will be changed. Lives will be renewed. The altar will be different. Demonic forces will be challenged at the altar. Oh, glory to God. Your people would stretch their hands as Moses stretched his hands to go across the Red Sea. Father, that there will be a way that sinners and backsliders will walk back. Hallelujah! From sin and walk into the presence of God, shouting in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, and they will shout, then shall I awake. Be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Lord, we pray. Awake us, Lord. Stir us tonight. Stir us tonight, Holy Father. We beseech you that you would stir us tonight. Glory, hallelujah. Stir us tonight, Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we look to you right now. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.